It's Monday, the 7th of August. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And breaking sad news out of Southern California, Cal Fire has lost three firefighters in a mid-air collision between two helicopters while responding to a small brush fire near Banning, California, last evening around 6 p.m. Here's what we know so far. Here on the Aviation Safety Network, 6 August 2023, a Bell 407 helicopter Owner Operator Aero Leasing November 555 Alpha Sierra, three fatalities, three occupants on board near Cabazon, California, aerial firefighting. They departed from Hemet Ryan Airfield, the uh, air attack base there. A Bell 407 Eagle 407 horsepower conversion crashed in Cabazon, California after a mid air collision with the Sikorsky S64 while fighting a blaze in Riverside County in Southern California. Now, it looks like this was just the initial uh, response to get to the fire when they collided. The helicopter which crashed was performing work under contract with the CDF, or CAL FIRE. The three occupants, one CAL FIRE division chief, one CAL FIRE captain, and the contractor pilot died, and the helicopter was destroyed. The M64 made a hard landing. According to initial scanner traffic, this was a full brush response with one OV-10, two S-2T air tankers, and two helicopters. These two helicopters came out of the Hemet Ryan Air Attack Base and were responding to a fire located right over here by Banning, California, just a little bit to the east and south of the Banning Airport. So these both of these helicopters launched out of here and ended up colliding just right about here near the Banning Municipal Airport, just prior to reaching the fire, which was located right about here. Firefighting and flying air attack here in Southern California is some of the most congested airspace and busiest airspace and busiest radios in all of firefighting. Here's a picture of the fatal accident aircraft, the Bell 407 helicopter under contract, painted in silver, a very hard to see color. Here's some pictures of the S-64. Here's a 37 Sierra located here. And these giant sky crane helicopters often operate with a snorkel hanging down from the helicopter as shown in this photograph over here of ship 780. Here's the ADSB data of 5 Alpha Sierra, which was the Helco aircraft, which was the one with all the fatalities on it. We'll talk more about how these dispatches work in a moment, but they departed out of Hemet Ryan. Looks like they did a 360 over here by the Potrero Reserve to look at something and then headed on over towards the fire and the collision occurring right over here near the Banning Municipal Airport at an altitude of about 2,300 feet. Note that the elevation here at the Banning Airport is about 2,200 feet. So they're very low following following the terrain into the fire. The Sky Crane, November 4037 Sierra, <clears throat> departed Hemet and re proceeded relatively directly to the fire, again following the terrain up and over the pass and down into the valley below with the last altitudes coming in at, well, that says 3,200 feet, 3,100 feet on that data there. So if we download the data from ADSB Exchange and put it into Google Earth of the two tracks, we can see the helicopters departing Hemet Ryan Airfield. They cross paths somewhere right along here shortly after departure. The Helco aircraft, the Bell 407, does a left 360 over here, and then they end up coming together right here just past the Banning Airport. Now the fire is located right over here at the intersection of uh, Broadway and Esperanza in Cabazon, California, just east of Banning. It apparently was a trailer fire that spread into the brush and was anywhere from 3 to 20 acres, but they got the full brush response. Looking straight down at the data, here is the uh, Sky Crane coming in this way, and here is the Helco or the Bell 407 coming in this way, crossing paths, and then the Sky Crane was apparently able to do a forced landing back right about here. 
And looking at the altitudes, it looks like the, well, the two altitudes were just about exactly e equal. Not very high up off of the train, basically following the train into the fire located over here. Looking at this from the north, looking south, you can see the helicopters following the train on down towards the fire. And I suspect this is a gap in the ADSB data of the Helco helicopter right along in here. So one of the many distractions that uh, they're dealing with is the flight pattern here at Banning Municipal Airport. That frequency is 122.8. The helicopters have multiple radios. They're working simultaneously. How do these two helicopters lose situational awareness of where each other is at? Most of these helicopters have some form of TCAS or TCAD equipment on board. Investigators will need to be determined if that was up and working. All of us generally have four flight now with obviously ADSB data available to us. And normally when you brief coming into a fire, you brief an altitude separation. How come these two guys did not have their altitude separation coming into the fire? And how did they lose situational awareness of each other's location? As this accident happened about 6 p.m., the sun would be setting in the west, looking towards the east. As these aircraft were flying to the east, they merged together in a rather acute angle with the sun behind them, possibly already in the shadows of these mountains. Now, the huge Sikorsky sky crane was able to land with damage only to his snorkel and a flat right main landing gear. So what I suspect happened investigators will find that the Bell 407 helicopter flew into the snorkel as it was dangling down below the Sikorsky helicopter, separating the rotor and blades from the 407. And looking at the scene of the crash, you can see the helicopter blades of the 407 quite a distance away from the rest of the wreckage. As an emergency responder, one of the number one rules is you don't want to become part of the emergency in responding to the emergency. So CAL FIRE has a very well um, choreographed procedure for entering the fire area. They practice this over and over with the sandbox training like we've covered before on this channel. Um, and this ensures that the aircraft are in communication with each other and have proper altitude separation before entering the fire area. So investigators are gonna to need to find out what happened in this situation. How did the situational awareness break down and what was going on with the communications between these two helicopters? Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.